What's up, guys? Today we are back with the FHN Sports Show called FHN Game Day. We basically go over a bunch of news and statistics in FHN and professional sports. Yes, so uh, today we are going to be starting off with some hockey coverage by Sam. Yes, we are. So far, hockey is 1-2 with a big win against Eureka High School the past Friday. Their next game will be on Sat Saturday, November 20th. Um, they will play Fort Small East, who is 0-3, mm -hmm. so I think we have a good shot of winning that game. Yeah, uh, I've heard from the hockey players at North that I think that's going to be a win for us. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be there. We'll be filming. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping to see a win there. I'm Me too, um, dude. I'm hoping yeah. to see the, the crowd pack, too. Mm -hmm. How are the student sections? Because I haven't been to the game. The hockey student sections have actually been good so far. They've been quite impressive, yeah. I was really surprised with that win against Eureka. I was I so know. sad. I well, wish I went. Max Bancy, the goalie, he had like, gosh, 40 saves or something. He had a lot. No saves. goals allowed. Less it was, he was crazy. impressive, very impressive. He's like the guy yeah. in the blues. Yeah. That goalie. Jordan Benson, yes. All right, so you got, you got stats for us, Sim? <laughs> yeah, so our stat leaders, uh, Matthew Wells has two goals so far on the season. And Jeff McKinney and Aiden Stowers have are tied with two assists. <laughs> and our goalie, Max B Banty? Banty. Yep. Banty has 82 saves and a shutout. Last year, the hockey team was 5 11 and 1. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I think they got a chance to be better than that this yeah. season. Oh, yeah. they, have, they have a lot of returning players and stuff like that, so yeah. I, yeah. I think we'll be pretty good. And if they beat Fort Zumal East, yeah. then they're going to be on track to have a much better record than they did last year. Yeah, I mean, so if, if they win this game, 2 and 2 is far better than 1 and 3. That's mm -hmm. 500. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just totally different tra trajectories. So, uh, I'm hoping they can pull it off. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, now going back to uh, swimming and diving for FHN. They just got done with their season, just finished up at state. And uh, Logan Schofield, I'm sure you've heard of him, uh, four state placings all four years of high school. He got Stupid. first place twice. Yeah, he is insane. 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 <laughs> yeah, I mean, What's that guy eating for nobody breakfast? does that. <laughs> That's impossible to yeah. win four, like, yeah, he's really good. As a freshman, too. And not only did he place, he got first place twice and second place twice. The best That's diver in the state. That is I swear. He is absolutely amazing. And um, another diver, uh, Euphridge, made it to high school, or uh, made it to state in his first year of diving. So uh, wow. I think Logan, as a senior, you know, he's going to be leaving. But maybe we have a legacy of good divers. Yeah, behind, seriously, uh, man. Um, Seems like we got a lot of good potential. Yeah, I'm excited to see how it goes. I'm and pretty uh, scared to dive. I don't know. I could never do that stuff. It scares yeah. me too. Honestly. Oh my gosh! Scared well, the heights. synchronization they have to have too. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, uh, the swim team. We did send two relay teams. I think it was four by one hundred and four by four hundred, and unfortunately, both teams DQ'd for a false start. So. Yikes. We did not. We, we did not get a chance to compete in those. But you know, the state state diving title. I'll take that. Yeah. Any day. State title? Sheesh. <laughs> like, plenty good for me. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Devin, you want to take us to FHM Boys Basketball? Yes, gladly. All right. Uh, the team last year had a rough year, unfortunately, finishing with the record of 1-13. Ouch. Um, and, yeah, well, I do think that record was definitely skewed by COVID. Mm. You know, the basketball team, the boys basketball team, I think had the worst COVID yeah. Uh, the amount of quarantines they had, I think two guys on the team had COVID at one point. And so they had to miss games and forfeit, and they just, they were without some of their better players. Yeah, you can really tell by the stats, like, they're good all the points for them, like, really low. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah but uh, you want to go into individual details? Uh, individual details, uh, their highest scorer and rebounder last year was one of their big men, Trenton Oglesby. Uh, he's now a senior, and I believe he will have an important role for this team this year. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you on that for sure. Um, he yeah he was one of the leading scores last year, and now that he's a senior and he's had that chance to develop, mm -hmm. you know he's gonna be even better. He's definitely gonna be able, be like one of like the team captains for yeah, sure. Oh for, for sure. sure. I mean just we did a media day with him and just he just gave off those leader leader. Oh, yeah for sure. Aura. He's definitely yeah I see him as captain. Love his sure. tattoo by the way. Oh my gosh it's yes. Sick. Faith over fear. Right. It's awesome. and that, man that's sick yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely you want to continue. And uh, an exciting player to watch uh, last year was definitely Tony Bretz, who has one of the best handles in my opinion at oh, pitching. Dude, and his three point shot. His three point shot. He would. He had. A, he was either on or off, I think. But his on games, he would be like 
shooting 75% yeah. from the three-point line. It was, he's yeah. disgusting in pickup games. It was absurd. I played like two with him, and I never want to play with him again. He's like oh, a young man. CJ. <laughs> yeah, he's so a cheat, he, Unstoppable. I mean, his shot, he's just so good. It's it's yeah. really impressive. He's got an amazing vertical, too. I mean, really? really? Yeah, I mean, he's wow. like he's sore, but he can mm -hmm. he can jump pretty high. Yeah, that I'm I'm excited to watch him. Man. And for him to shoot threes over uh, big people like yeah. they're playing, it's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. So well, he gets his shots off really quick too. So I think that helps a little bit with the height. Yeah, thing. it's gonna be exciting to watch him this year. For sure. Yeah, yeah. we we have uh, pretty solid something thing. to look forward to this yeah. season. Yeah. As for uh, uh, girls basketball, so last year we had Isabel Del Rue on our team. Okay. I'm sure you guys knew. D1 yeah. commit. She went to Missouri State, I believe. Yep. Um. And so now we're going to be relying on our seniors, Hannah Ermling and Faith Todd, to really like step up and fill that leader role this year. Yeah. Um, last year, Hannah dropped 13 points per game, and she seemed to move the ball really well in the guard spot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh. As for Faith Todd, she didn't get too too much playing time because she only averaged about like 2.2 .2 points per game. Mm -hmm. um, but I think with Delarue gone, because she kind of took up a lot of the playing time. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. Faith Todd is definitely going to get a lot more minutes, as with everybody else on the team. Mm -hmm. So, I think everybody's stat lines compared to last year are going to go up yeah. high. Like everybody's going to yeah. have much better stats. When you when you have a D one commit, it's your playbook is get the ball to Isabel. Mm -hmm. Like exactly. Yeah. Why? I mean, you why have a D one commit on your yeah. team. Why would and you not? She's going to one of the top. That was an AP top twenty five school too, mm -hmm. most states. So I mean, I think honestly, I think Hannah Ermeline will be by far the. Uh, lead scorer here because mm -hmm. um, she's been working on the off in the offseason she's never played club basketball before but this year she started playing for Blue Star which okay. is like one of the top girls basketball clubs in this there we state. go same All team right. Delarue played for hey but so, don't don't count out our forwards okay I'm telling you Faith Todd is gonna be deadly in that post oh yeah yeah, yeah. I mean I her height that. and she she's tall and she can body through people I think it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun watch season out for it man watch out for it yeah set up for it yeah. Well, yeah, they uh, start off the season against Central, I believe, who is uh, one of the top teams in the state. They, uh, they, see what happens. They went to sectionals last year and lost to Incarnate Word, who is, like, perennially the best team in the state. So yeah. we, talked, I mean, we talked about it last time. I'm going to bring it up again. I think we are. We have really good sports programs, but we just faced a very tough competition, and yeah. I feel like that's why we don't mm -hmm. have – you know, well, good enough record. And between yeah. Hal and Hal Central, they have like every single sport covered for top teams in the state. Yes. It's like if Hal's not good at softball, Central is, or Central's good at volleyball, Hal wasn't so good. Like, it's it's all around. Those schools just they cover it all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so moving on from uh, FHN sports, let's go to professional and college sports. So Sam, you want to kick it off with college football? Yes. Yeah, so. First, we had number 11, Baylor, play, uh, playing number 12, Oklahoma. I actually watched that game. I thought Oklahoma was actually going to win this one, but they g mm. uh, got beat 27-14. That is a big differential. It is. Man. I blame it on uh, Spencer Rattler, who uh, wasn't present, but... Caleb Williams has to step up. So. Yeah, Spencer Rattler just isn't isn't what he was last season or this season for that matter. Like he started out the season, and I would say people were like, "Okay, he's all right." Mm. Well, now everybody at Oklahoma hates him because he can't deliver. So now they're relying on Caleb Williams mm. to step up, and I mean he has been. You know, Oklahoma. I mean, they obviously, were 12th. they yeah, were twelve. So. Yeah, I mean the, I, this this uh, game right here will surely send them down the rankings. I sure. mean. I think they'll still be in the top twenty-five, but they'll be in the lower twenties. Like I don't, I don't think they're gonna be one of those top teams. But um, yeah, so LSU versus Arkansas. Arkansas barely pulled it off, mm -hmm. and such a like boring game to watch. It was not it was super low scoring. Not much going on there. Yeah, um, and then Iowa beating Minnesota. That's, yeah, you know they start off the season they were the number two team on the AP poll, and then just kind of. I expected that. After one. that Purdue game, they just fell off. Yeah, for sure. It's the Purdue curse. But uh, yeah, what else you got for us? Mm, we got a Mississippi against Texas A&M. Uh, Mississippi beat Texas twenty nine nineteen. Hmm. It was a uh, it was a pretty good game. Mm, I watched that game, and uh, 
because some of my friends are A&M fans, and it was okay. really disappointing because to start off the game, I don't know if you guys watched it or not, but A&M had like five consecutive three and outs, and, and uh, it was Mississippi just kept scoring over and over yeah. again. And I just felt so bad because I'm like, guys, your team like really sucks. Mississippi was kind of a shock team for me this year. I They hadn't been that good in the past years. I hadn't ima- uh, yeah, remembered. No. And then I agree. this year they've just catapulted. And it's like, yeah. Like, yeah it happens like that. But, uh, yeah, so that's it for college football. So college basketball going into the top 25. There are some big uh, performances going on um, and big matchups too. Number two, UCLA faced Villanova, who is the number five seed. Or, uh, number five ranked, and uh, only one by nine. So you know, typically, they're close in ranking, but like when you got the one and two seed, they're typically like heads and shoulders above everyone else. Yeah. And Villanova kept it close. Um, you gotta give them credit. Villanova is like a perennial number one seed. You know, like every single year, you see them at the top of the bracket for March Madness. So, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, I also think um, it definitely goes to show because of how like close they were in rankings. Mm-hmm. Um, since the game was close, I feel like that's got to mean something. Like their rankings have to be like they're pretty accurate. Pretty yeah. accurate. Yeah, yeah well, for sure. Mm-hmm. And Gonzaga, you know, they're they're a hard team to root for. <laughs> yes. Every year, they're not good at anything except basketball. Literally, their only yeah. thing they're good at. Exactly. But basketball, they dominate. One seed every single year, yep. and right now they're ranked number Pretty unfair. one. Yep, yep, ranked number one. They beat Alcorn State, who is uh, from who knows where. You know, <laughs> like a yeah, little bit of an unfair matchup there. But uh, yeah, Gonzaga beat them eighty-four to fifty-seven. I would say watch so. out for him in March Madness, but I think that's. That's kind of common knowledge. Known. Yeah. yeah. So uh, another team, Illinois, you know, they were second ranked team overall at the end of the year last year for uh, March Madness. They, they were number one seed, second ranked overall. And, you know, they had a, quite a di- disappointing uh, finish playing Loyola Chicago, who is somehow the Cinderella team every single year. Cinderella team. I mean, they're like an eight or nine seed, and they get final four. And, I mean, it's just... Very magical. It's so impressive. And, you know, speaking of Loyola, they are actually first place in Missouri Valley Conference, which, you know, you can't expect anything else from them. Yeah. They're such a consistent team. Hey, man, what you can give, you can give. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Sister Mary, what is that? That's her name? Yep. Yeah, she's she's bringing the magic, I guess, like you said. Seriously. Um, so, going back to our state, Mizzou is... Uh, they're Mizzou. We'll, we'll say that. Um, you know? Yeah. They they just they're they're kind of similar to friends all north and way. <laughs> Great <laughs> journalism program, but sports, sports program <laughs> exactly the same way as we are. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know hey, they made they made, again though. We've only gone through fall sports. We had a bit that of is a true. Rough, there, there, rough fall sports yeah. thing. Okay, but there is hope. I More to come. There's awesome. yeah. Um, but yeah, Mizzou's unranked. They made March Madness last year as a nine or a ten seed, I believe. Oh, um, and you know, kind of. I was kind of excited for them, and then they lost. I was yeah. like, okay, because I, I picked them to win three games. I had them beaten in one seed, which was probably stupid that was in retrospect. Stupid. What but, round uh, did they lose in? First round. To who? Uh, it was the eight seed. I can't remember who exactly. I think it was Arkansas. Um, but, yeah, they uh, Mizzou just played UMKC two nights ago and lost 82-66. Neither of them are ranked teams. So losing to UMKC that bad? Come on, right? I, I would expect Mizzou to... They're a big state college. To, it does like, suck. pummel them. They should, yeah, they should be able to do much better, and they just aren't. Like, they're just like us. You'd think we'd be able to win games and stuff, but it just doesn't It doesn't happen. Yeah. And it's it's oh, unfortunate. Yeah, but, um, yeah, tough topic there. But uh, hockey, you want to move on to the St. Louis Blues? As if play? that wasn't any worse than yeah, what we were just talking it, about. It, it, gets, it gets worse. So, it gets worse. All Blues fans, including myself, I would like to apologize in advance for the rant I'm about to go on. Um, but, so last show, I believe I said that the Blues' start to the season might have been a small fluke. Okay? Yeah, and I was fighting well, for the Well, it's pretty opposite. obvious it was now, because mm-hmm. we are on a four-loss streak. I will say, of those four losses, it's only been one goal differential, so that's at least good. Okay? Yeah. Last night, or we'll say... Tuesday night. Yeah, today's Wednesday. We'll say Tuesday night. Yep. We played the Coyotes. Mm-hmm. They were 1 13 and 1 coming into this game. Come on. And they won uh, 3 to 2 or 4 to 3, I don't remember. 3 to 2. And uh, 
yeah, I think that I think that kind of just makes it obvious. Like we aren't what we were at the beginning of the season. No. And um, I think we just traded Clifford mm -hmm. for future negotiations. Yeah. With the Winnipeg oh, Jets. That's, and what does that mean? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, like I don't understand. We got nothing in return. Yeah. And so there's that right there. Kairou is obviously leading goal scorer on our team, seven mm. goals on the season. Yeah. Robert Thomas leading the team in assists with 14. And um, he's been solid. Those are really the highlight players. Notice how yeah. I didn't say our goalie. What about my favorite goalie? Yeah. So uh, uh, Jordan Benning. Benning. I, how do you okay. feel about him right now? I would honestly say he's definitely one of the top at least five players on the Blues right now. Okay. But I think our defense is really struggling to help him because mm. I've noticed after watching a lot of their games, it's always the cross ice passes are wide open and okay. then the dude just finishes into like an empty net practice. Yeah, because there's, there's no one marking him. I think yeah. Benny's is playing his part. So. Um, well, yeah, and you know with goalies, you yeah they get. They can't do anything yeah. if the defense sucks. They mm -hmm. can't be constantly blocking. Yeah, and like, I don't want to say it, but if the Blues keep losing, I might say Bennington is wasted potential. <laughs> Honestly, because if he if mm -hmm. he can't shine like he should be, then it's no, no, nothing other than wasted yeah. potential. Yeah. But well, as know, for all of the other fans, yeah. okay, uh, Florida Panthers are leading their division. New York Rangers are leading their division. Winnipeg Jets are leading their division, and the Edmonton Oilers are leading theirs. Um, our next game is against the eight six and one Sharks, who we beat earlier okay. five to three. Hmm. But with our four loss streak, who knows what will happen? Yeah, and you know it makes you wonder: is the Blues window closed? Their playoff window? Yeah. Mm -mm. Don't count them you out. Don't think so. Don't count them out. Heck no. Yeah, We've so. only I don't played. Think so. no. Listen, I okay. I I did just like roast the heck out of them. <laughs> yeah. But you have to like they're eight and five. Uh, yeah. So there's that, and then. You know, when we won the Stanley Cup two years ago, we had like one of the worst seasons ever. That was the craziest ever. season. We yeah, had one that of the is worst very seasons true. ever. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's going to be another. I don't think you can really compare anything to that though. I. It was a season that was so unheard of. It was. I don't think it could happen again. I think it could because I, we're the Blues. I think it's we. Missouri. I think we need a win to get, get us back on our. Feet. Our sports are like our weather. You never know yeah. when it's going to be good or bad. That is good. Analogy. And it can switch up on you in a second. That is true. That is a good point. Very good analogy. Um, yeah. It, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see how they do down the stretch. Um, For sure. I, I don't, but honestly, I don't think, if they if they don't have a winning record, at least like 550 through halfway through the season, they don't have a chance. We'll see. I don't think we'll so. We'll see. I got faith in you guys. We'll come back to this show uh, later in the season. Wait, I, to, uh, I have one more back. thing. Yeah. What do you like to add in? Let's talk about the Chiefs real quick. Ooh. Oh, no, since bro. we're talking about Missouri teams, the Chiefs, man, the Chiefs, it's rough. It, it is. Mahomes is not in his form. You know, he had a good, he had a really good game this it's weekend. Not his fault. I'm but sorry. no, his O line's not. the The team as a whole just isn't the same. Yeah, but I think it's the wide receivers' fault. I think oh more, than like, more than like more than like fifty, so much. more than fifty percent of his interceptions mm -hmm. have been because they keep tipping his passes. Yeah. And yeah, they'll just pop them up. It really isn't easy. his fault. Yeah, it's just yeah, they are not the same team. It's so just traumatized from a. Yeah, it's like we have all these big. great players, but we just we can't deliver. Can't piece it together. Mm -hmm. Oh and yeah, that's the thing with team sports. You gotta have everything working, and not everything is working. I think one of the best so. things in sports is chemistry. Yeah, for you gotta sure. you gotta like know what your team is, and you gotta be able to play with your team confidently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, that is all for our show this week. Um, thank you guys for joining us. And uh, once again, I'm Kyle. I'm Sam. I'm Devin. And I'm Parker. And that's our show. Thanks for joining. Peace.